Hey y'all, Instinct Survivalist coming to you again with another Two Tip Tuesday. Hey, thanks for watching the ones you already have. We've got almost 100 views on last week's, uh, just shy of 90 on the week before. So thanks for watching. Thanks for the tips that are coming in. Got some today, uh, got some the other day as well. Thank you for being part of this community and helping us to build what we got going here. So today's tips, what two tips do we have today? Containers and cordage. Bill, this is sounding a lot like the five C's of survivability from Dave Canterbury. Kinda. <laughs> That's the reality of things. Uh, next week, we'll go into some soft skills uh, to go with it, but I want to make sure that we're looking at some factors that can actually set you apart, to set you above, and does give you that mindset of survivability. Whether you're traveling just to the grocery store, traveling for a living like what I did um, for a long while, uh, or, or you know what, hey, just around the house. These things cannot be replicated or are difficult to replicate in the wild, and that's why we actually go that route. Can you replicate a journal in the wild? Well, yeah, you can carve into a tree for some kind of fashion, uh, smudge on a rock, it works great. These are things to make your life a little easier when we talk about survivability, when we talk about the factors that will set us apart moving forward. So let's actually get into this. Now, what I have today is uh, I've got three different containers um, and some of these I carry regularly, some of them not so much. So this is the Pathfinder water bottle. It's the, uh, I think Clean Canteen uh, is another one that's just like this. In fact, I haven't done the research. I think they're the same one. Um, this is the uh, UST Solo Kit. Um, actually, nice little cup and cup and bowl, if you will. Uh, works real great. You probably saw that when I was doing the uh, the preview uh, for the or the review for the uh, Yuko Lantern. Um, and then this is the MSRC Gold donated uh, by a good friend of mine. I thank him. I asked for a, a container. I wanted to try one out, and he goes, um, I've got one. You can have it. So um, thank you, Oddball. <laughs> Oddball Bushcraft and Survival. Thank you, sir. All right, what is the purpose of this? Why do we need these? What makes it beneficial, and why is it even a two-tip? Right. Well, one is because for some of us, especially in the South, I mean, here it is. I, I recorded, this is the second video for today. I actually had to change wardrobe because of the heat, the humidity and things like that. I need water. Okay. So it's got water in it. Uh, sometimes I could put, split it with Gatorade as well. The other side of that is being able to take and boil water. Uh, now I can do it in here, I can do it in here, I can do it in here. Uh, and the purpose of that being is because you want to make sure that you have ability to drink water at any given point in time, right? If it means that there's a questionable water source and I have to boil it, I need a container. I need something to do that with. The only other option for those of you that have seen my burn bowl video uh, is to actually take rocks, heat them up and put them in a container. Well, let's eliminate that because that takes a longer time by being able to boil it in a container. Now, the other factor of this is, and, I, and I'll go into, again, the travel factor, right? The travel and how I used to travel all the time, um, is because uh, I would actually take and keep that container with me. Should something happen, then I had a container for use for boiling water and to make sure I stayed hydrated, whether it's plane, trains, or automobiles. Okay, so those are the factors, those are the reasons. Uh, the other side of that is uh, you have the ability to make uh, fomentations, poultices. I mean, the list goes on when you start looking at medicinal pieces as well of why you would need a container. You need something to uh, process those things in. Now, the other side of that, and we'll go into this as I finish out the cordage one, is I actually usually keep all these little hanks of paracord or bank line inside my pot so when I carry my pot I usually keep them in there now I emptied it out just for this video uh, but that's usually what happens is I keep all the hanks in here um, and then I also put a bandana in here as well because what happens is now it becomes a kit that if something were to happen I can grab this I'm usually pretty good to go I've got my cordage I've got my pot uh, the only thing I don't have is a knife right bust a rock we can actually take and make a, a sharp face on that so that's a different story for another day but that's why we need a container and what the purpose of containers are and why it made it to two tip tuesday now let's look at another one right uh, the other one is cordage now you'll see in this in this case i've got two hanks of paracord uh, this one is 15 feet and this one is uh, just shy of 50. 
How do I know that? Because I'm the one that wrapped them. Um, paracord, yes, great survival tool, okay? Flat out, bar none, used by the military. If you're using mil spec, some, now be cautious in that. Uh, I'm not gonna get into the debate of the five strand versus seven strand and why one's mil spec and why, I, I don't really care. We're talking about cordage as a whole, not one that's gonna hold up a freaking airplane, okay? So keep that in mind. But paracord, great resource. Also, tarred bank line, brand new roll right here. Um, I picked this one up from, uh, I think I did actually get this from Survival uh, Self-Reliance Outfitters, uh, number 36 bank line. Uh, this becomes very good because it binds on itself, and that may be something that you're looking for versus a paracord which does slip. Um, even if this is wet, it does adhere to itself, and the list goes on and on and on. Why you would use a tarred bank line versus a paracord versus something like this, which is a waxed simulated sinew. Okay, now um, it is a cotton thread. Uh, it's got wax like embedded in it, uh, immersed in it, however you impregnated in it, however you want to say it. Um, and I actually use this for when I do leather work, but one of the things I was doing, I was working on something this morning, and I realized, hey, you know what? Uh, that is a great all-around cordage that would work real similar to a tarred bank line. So uh, it binds on itself. Um, yes, it is wax. Yes, it can slip and slide, but if you do a tight knot on there, uh, it's gonna just take, and especially if you add a little bit of heat to it, remember the lighter, right, the heat source? Um, we can actually melt that wax in together, let it cool, and it's gonna bind on itself even more. So that's the same with uh, the tarp bank line. Now, what can I use the cordage for? Again, it's not just about, oh, hey, go put some of this in your kit. What can I use this for? Well, if you're looking at, again, survivability, right? Survivability says, I need to be able to create a shelter. I need to be able to um, bind things together with either a, uh, a knot, or whether I'm doing a lashing, or whether I am filling with blank, okay? So I need a cordage to do that. So we can either sit, we can go and find us some material out in the wild, and then process it down, break it down, and then sit there and do the, the two-ply twist, and then a three-ply twist, and maybe even a braid, or something of that nature. So that process takes a long time. I'm not saying you can't do it. I'm saying if we don't have to do it, then don't do it. So, um, Realized I was yelling there for a minute. Dogs started barking over here. Uh, dudes over here had all day to cut grass and I'm not sure what he's doing, so. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. Anyway, but to tell you that process time, uh, it is, it's time. I actually take and process uh, cordage when I'm sitting there watching TV in the evenings. And that's one of the things I was talking with Justin Cook about out of uh, Wilderness Ways, um, Way Back Wilderness Ways. I think that's it, waybackwilderness.net. Um, anyway, he was talking about he would just take pieces of cordage after he's already processed it is he'll sit there and watch TV or do something and sit there and do the, the twisting and, and uh, uh, making physical cordage versus just sitting there in the, in the middle of the woods just staring into nothing. Um, so that, those two things are hard to reproduce, whether it be a bark container and natural cordage or whether you use, hey, you know what, I've already got these. Uh, they don't take up a lot of room. This actually nests in here if I want to go that route. Um, so there's some factors to think about in how we're, how we're dealing with, how we're storing things. Again, my cordage will sit inside my MSR Seagull, and then I take this whole kit and put it inside my bag. And the benefit of that is now I know I've got my cordage, I've got my kit. Um, I need to make sure I have my knife on me, which typically I do. So, you know, that's always a factor, okay? Always a factor. Uh, we make sure that we have these things and carry these things with us a lot. And yes, for those of you watching at home uh, or on the road or wherever you are, thanks for doing that. Uh, my lighter is in my pocket, so <laughs> keep that in mind. All right, guys. Hey, that's it. Thank you for joining us for another Two Tip Tuesday. I appreciate it. I pre appreciate all the views. I appreciate all the comments. The tips that y'all are giving back to me are things I'm taking and turning back around. The one about cotton is an example. The, the comment was find something to stop the bleeding. And so I actually utilized the cotton for that. I already had it planned, but we wanted to address that specific item. Um, we talked about knives the other week, um, and some of you saw the, the uh, Swiss Army knife that I carry, a pair of tweezers that's in it, great for removing ticks. I actually loaned it out 
uh, loaned out the tweezers uh, on a on a site a couple of weeks ago, and in removing ticks. And so that's uh, you know some of the benefits: splinters, ticks, things of that nature. You want to make sure uh, that you're enabling yourself to survive another day, whether it's a quick rescue at 72 hours, or whether we're talking about long term. I choose to be out here, uh, but I need to do X, Y, and Z. So uh, that's why we look at these. So again, thanks for the views. Thanks for the likes, thanks for the subscribes, thanks for the tweets and retweets uh, when they come across. Thank you for all that you do. So until next time, use your instincts to survive, and thanks for watching.